Hi guys, my name is Amber Strife, and this is a very, very special video that's all about you guys. Well, sort of. You'll see. <laughs> right now, there are 110 of you, my lovely subscribers, uh, and I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for supporting me and experiencing games with me and uh, watching my videos and enjoying them enough to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I think the best way for me to say thank you um, is to give away my game of the year to you guys. Uh, I wanted to make a top 10 video and I also wanted to make a thank you video so I just kind of got lazy and did them at the same time. <laughs> so uh, stick around to hear more about uh, the contest and uh, let's get started with list. Well, actually, before I start the list, I do want to say that uh, I didn't get to play that many games this year. So if you don't see your favorite game in my top 10 list, uh, I've left a list of games below in the description that are kind of like honorable mentions, air quotes. Um, these are games that I have, but I didn't get to play. So I might have made the list if I had had time to play them, but I didn't, so it is what it is. So let's get started for reals this time. Number 10 is Minecraft. Uh, this is a game that just about everyone has played already. Uh, it's been playable for quite some time as it went through beta. Uh, probably the best part of the game is that you can craft or make just about anything you can think of. Uh, there are hundreds of crafting recipes that help you do this. Uh, personally, I love the exploration and the combat. Uh, I love to explore caves and build mines to find uh, rare materials and kill everything in my path as I do that. Uh, I really love the landscapes too. Uh, it's amazing that all the hills, mountains, valleys, whatever, uh, everything is just totally randomly generated. So it's always fun when you start a new world to explore and see what kind of world it made for you. Uh, the creative aspect, I'm not so great at. <laughs> Uh, not to say I'm not very creative personally, but uh, I've just never really connected with the creation part of the game. Uh, so rather than design and create my own towns or structures or whatever, uh, I'm more into just recreating something from outside the game that I really love. Number 9 is L.A. Noir. Uh, I've always loved detective games and detective movies, and this is kind of a little bit of both. Uh, it puts you in the shoes of a detective, Cole Phelps, uh, as best it can while telling a pretty good story. Uh, but for a game that puts a lot of emphasis on story, it kind of gets confusing at some parts, mainly towards the end. Uh, the setting and the atmosphere are great. Uh, it's such a good era for a detective story. And the facial capture and animations are outstanding. Uh, it's great to see different characters in the game and actually recognize some of the actors playing them. Uh, the cases are pretty interesting. Uh, you get to fully investigate crime scenes and facial animations are a big part of the interrogations. Though it is kind of obvious when they're lying since their eyes dart around the room like they're trying to stare down a fly or something. <laughs> uh, a lot of people probably get tired of the driving sections after a while. Because it is kind of tedious, uh, but I hardly ever skip them because that seemed to be where the funniest stuff took place. It was just sort of ironic and hilarious that in the big scheme of things, Cole Phelps is seemingly the best detective in LA, but he can't drive worth a damn. <laughs> Number eight is Magica. Uh, this game has kind of a good single player, uh, but to play it multiplayer with your friends is amazingly fun. You play as wizards who can combine different elements into spells that can do anything from kill your enemies, heal your friends, or set up walls or shields for defense. Uh, it's also really, really easy to kill your friends, uh, but don't worry, you can bring them back. Or not. It's your choice. <laughs> and for an indie game that uh, frequently goes on sale for next to nothing, uh, it's a pretty lengthy game with lots of DLC. There's also PvP modes and Colosseum modes where you fight as many waves of mobs as you can before dying. Uh, there are tons and tons of references to pop culture uh, and it's filled with jokes that I personally never get tired of. I laugh every single time. Uh, this is a game that has a simple concept 
but it's so amazingly complex at the same time. Uh, it's so much fun to play with your friends or you can join random public games online. Uh, I think it definitely deserves to be on anyone's top 10 list. Number seven is Trine 2. Uh, this is another simply amazing game for what they're asking you to pay for it. Uh, the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. I can't tell you how many times that I've had to just stop and look at how pretty it is. Like, just stop solving the puzzles and just look at how pretty it is. <laughs> As for gameplay, uh, I think it's a refreshingly different approach to uh, puzzle games in this era of gaming. Uh, the characters all have different strengths and weaknesses, and a lot of the time it's completely up to you which one you use to get through the level. Uh, my favorite is probably the wizard though. Gotta have more boxes. <laughs> probably the only complaint I have about this game is the length. Uh, I love it so much I wish there was more. Like Magicka, it's pretty solid as a single player, but it's amazing as a co-op game or a multiplayer game. I've had so much fun playing with my friends, uh, and if you'd like to see us play through the game, you can click the annotation at the top of the screen, and that will take you to our trying 2 videos. And just as a quick side note, we are having a contest to win a copy of that game as well, so be sure to check out those videos for more information on that. Number six is Terraria. Uh, this game gets compared to Minecraft a lot, and I think that's just a little bit unfair. I mean, some of some of the basic concepts are the same. You do collect materials and craft those into tools and armor and other things, and baddies come out at night. Uh, but this game is geared more towards adventure than crafting, and that's probably why I enjoy it uh, more than Minecraft. There are NPCs that will come and live with you and trade with you uh, if you build them a room and complete certain objectives. There's a wide range of enemy and biomes, some rare and some not. Uh, and I absolutely love how many different kinds of weapons there are in this game. Some you craft with rare materials, uh, some you have to find, and some are so rare that you might even have to restart the game in a different world to even see. Different events happen occasionally, like uh, the Blood Moon, where there are endless waves of zombies and demon eyes, along with some other nasty enemies. Uh, if you're lucky or unlucky. Uh, and then there's the goblin invasion, which is kind of the same thing, but with different types of goblins. Uh, by exploring, you can upgrade your health and mana, which helps with the different kinds of bosses in the game. Each boss has a different method by which you summon it, and they're all uh, different. They all have differences in difficulty. Uh, what you're seeing right now is the Eye of Cthulhu. In this game, there are sky islands, high above ground level. There's a hell world all the way down in the center of the earth, I guess you could say. Uh, there's a jungle on one side of the world and a dungeon on the other with the meanest boss in the game. Uh, for this price, this game is simply amazing and a definite must have. Number five is Dead Island. Uh, I was actually very skeptical about Dead Island when it first came out. Uh, a lot of games claim to put a new spin on things and then they end up just being the same old thing that everyone is releasing. Uh, but I totally fell in love with this game. I love that it's melee based uh, and even if you do have a gun, the ammo is scarce enough that you can't use it all the time unless you're fighting enemies that also have guns and you can get ammo from them. Uh, the setting is both gorgeous and apocalyptic at the same time, so it kind of has an ironic sort of beauty, I guess you could say. Uh, the heroes all have their own characteristics and personalities, so it works well enough as an RPG. The zombies, though, are really well done, in my opinion. They all have different bites and wounds, and the sounds and the voices blow my mind. Uh, the yells and the screams and groans or whatever uh, of the zombies are just really creepy and great at the same time uh, and it's nice that it's not just the special zombies that have them anyway it's just those little things like that that make it more immersive the game is still really buggy even months after release and the only DLC so far didn't really grab my attention uh, I, I would rather have DLC that I don't know wrapped up some quest lines you did and told you more about what happens at the end of the game <laughs> but still I absolutely love this game to death uh, and if you'd like to see my playthrough of it uh, you can just click the annotation at the top of the screen number four is Saints Row the third uh, this game is completely over the top and filled with about a hundred different ways to have some insane and uninhibited fun uh, from stealing cars to throwing innocent bystanders across the street to 
having helicopter chases across town. <laughs> you name it and you could probably do it in this game. But the character creation system has so many options. You can literally make your character look almost any way you want and then if you change your mind you can have plastic surgery and do it all over again. And the, the activities are probably the best part of the game. They are so fun and I never get tired of most of them. Uh, mayhem activities let you blow up and kill anything and everything in sight with or without a tank. Insurance, <laughs> insurance fraud has you running into cars on accident, air quotes again, uh, which creates some pretty hilarious ragdoll animations. Uh, and probably my favorite activity would be the Professor Genki-san activities where you go through a dangerous course of fire and electricity and you shoot mascots in the face for points and cash. You can buy property, complete activities, or take down other gangs to spread your control across the entire city. Pretty much it's hours and hours of insanity and I'm still having so much fun playing this game. And if you'd like to see me and Chris play through Saints Row, uh, there's an annotation at the top of your screen for you to watch that. So before we get to number three, I would just like to say that all three of these games are amazing. And it was really, really hard for me to put them in any kind of order. So technically it's a three-way tie between these games since there's such a minimal difference in my enjoyment of these games. Uh, so don't hate me, please. <laughs> number three is The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Like I said, please don't hate me, please don't hate me. I uh, absolutely love this game to death. Uh, it's so addicting that I actually miss playing it when I'm not playing it and I have to do other things. You can pretty much play the game any way you want, whether it's uh, two-handed combat or sneaking up on people, or in my case, I shoot lightning at people's faces. You can ask companions to join you in your adventures or go it alone. Uh, there's so much to do in this game that it's kind of overwhelming. Overwhelming in the best way way possible. Skyrim is so huge, there's so much to explore, so many quests to do, uh, lots of enemies to kill, so many NPCs to talk to, though half the NPCs kind of share voice actors, but I nitpick, I nitpick. <laughs> uh, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with RPGs, um, they just really aren't my cup of tea, you know, but uh, I think Skyrim is a game that just about anyone can get into. Oh, and the mods for this game are amazing! Uh, I try not to use the game-changing ones like the ones that let you ride mammoths, uh, but I'm a big fan of the graphic mods that make the game look so much better, uh, and it's a pretty good looking game to start with. Um, so that's a pretty watered down version of why I like Skyrim, but uh, if I talked about everything I liked, you'd be here for an hour. If you'd like to see me play Skyrim, click the annotation at the top of the screen. Number two is Batman Arkham City. Uh, ever since I was a little girl, I've been a complete Batman fangirl. And I was completely blown away when Arkham Asylum came out, and it was actually a good Batman game and an amazing game to play. Uh, and what Arkham City does is it just completely blows the lid off that game and makes it more of a sandboxy type game, but still with amazing characters and a great storyline. And the combat is just absolutely phenomenal. Sometimes rage-inducing, because I'm bad at it, <laughs> but still phenomenal. Uh, all the attacks flow so well together, and you can incorporate gadgets and different special abilities, uh, but probably the thing I like most about the combat is that you could push the same button to attack or counterattack, uh, but what he does is different almost every time. And the other playable characters are just as amazing. Uh, I recently bought the Robin and Nightwing DLCs, so I haven't really had time to play with those, but playing as Catwoman is almost as fun as playing as Batman. <laughs> It really makes me wish that they had made some sort of story mode for the Robin and Nightwing DLCs as well, uh, instead of just making them challenge map characters. Um, I really love the Riddler side quest and getting all the Riddler trophies. It's like a game within a game. <laughs> uh, it's definitely one of my favorite parts of the game. And I will always, always love the Joker just as much as Batman. But only if it's Mark Hamill. Has to be Mark Hamill. <laughs> This might have been my game of the year, but I didn't really feel right naming a game uh, that I haven't finished yet as my number one. But I have heard that it has an amazing end and I can't wait to see it. 
And if you'd like to watch my Batman videos, again, there is an annotation at the top of the screen for you to watch those. And finally, my game of the year has to go to Portal 2. Uh, I got into Portal 1 really late in the game uh, when they were offering it for free on Steam. Uh, and I was immediately excited for Portal 2, and I was not disappointed at all. This game is amazing in every way, shape, and form. I can't find something bad to say about it, uh, except that maybe, maybe that I can't ever get enough of it. <laughs> the music is amazing. Uh, the puzzles are fun and innovative. All the new gels and mechanics they added really brought a lot to the game without being too counterintuitive or difficult to learn and deal with and, and uh, solve the puzzles with. Uh, my favorite part of the game though has to be the voice work and the writing. Uh, each character has its own quirks, and the voice work for them is just outstanding. This is a game that I want to play over and over again just to experience the story again, and spend time with the characters, and listen to all the great lines that are everyone's favorites. Uh, and the co-op is so much fun. It feels like an entirely different game, well, not a different game, but an entirely equal game set in the Portal universe that you can play with a friend. Uh, you can tell that they put just as much work into the co-op game as they did uh, the single player game to make them both amazing. I can't say enough good things about this game, so I can't think of a better way to celebrate this amazing year of games uh, and to show my appreciation to you guys more than giving away this game. So here's the deal. I have two extra copies of this game. Uh, one is just the game by itself, for those of you who have the first game. Uh, I know a lot of people do since they were offering for free on Steam at one time, and it goes on sale a lot. And a second copy comes in a bundle with both Portal 1 and Portal 2. So if you've never really gotten into the games, um, but might like to, or if you have a friend that hasn't gotten into it yet and you want to play co-op with them, uh, the bundle's really great for that. Now, all you have to do is leave me a comment saying either Portal 2 Game or Portal 2 Bundle, depending on which one you want. There are some rules, though. First of all, you have to be subscribed to my channel. Uh, this is a thank you to all of my amazing subscribers, so it doesn't really make sense for me to give it to someone else over those of you who subscribe. Second, uh, you have to have a Steam account. I bought all the games through Steam, so there's not really a way for me to get them to you unless you also have Steam. Uh, and in case you're giving this to a friend, I will trade it to you instead of gifting it to you uh, so that you can pass it along to them. You'll have a week to leave your comments, so uh, seven days from today at midnight. And then I will randomly pick one person for the uh, Portal 2 game and one person for the Portal 2 bundle. And that's all there is to it. Leave me a comment with which game you'd like and or tell me what your top 10 games of 2011 were. Again, thank you all so much for subscribing and supporting me. I love every single one of you. And I promise I'll get back to posting videos regularly again. Uh, I have taken a little break from posting since I was pretty busy with family stuff during the holidays. I hope your holidays were great and that you had a happy new year. Uh, I hope you all have a good year filled with lots of love and luck and happiness. And I'll see you next time. Bye!